Welcome to the series of pre-watch videos on the wonderful topic of cash flow statement. This is one of the three medical reports, one of the three major financial statements that a post-grad business student is supposed to know. We started this journey, if you recall, with income statement as one of the first medical reports, moved on to balance sheet, and now finally are looking at this cash flow statement. I'm very clear for a manager, for an analyst, for an external stakeholder, if I have to prioritize the three financial statements in the order, I would definitely put cash flow statement right at the top. Couple of reasons for that. First, the certainty question that cash has is second to none. What I mean by that is, having gone through income statement, now you would agree with me that things like provisioning, things like accrual, have a sense of little bit of manipulation in them. But cash flows is very straightforward. Cash flows is a matter of fact. It's not a matter of opinion. Cash flows is a reality while accrual or let's say provisioning or let's say, uh, you know, any, any of those, uh, the, 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 the accrual part is somewhat related to an assumption, somewhat related to an estimate. Look at depreciation for that matter. You can change the amount of depreciation with a click by changing the useful life uh, you know, estimate or by changing the salvage value estimate. How simple it is for an accountant. And therefore, uh, accountant may resort. I'm not saying every company does that, but what I'm trying to say is every company can do that. And that's the reason why external stakeholders really uh, pay a lot of attention to the cash as a measure of the performance. The second important reason why cash flow statement is right at the top in terms of the priority is uh, the use of cash flow as a measure uh, in the corporate finance. So, you know, you've, I'm sure we've gone through a bit of corporate finance as well, um, or would do that very soon. There, in the decision-making module, as corporate finance is sometimes called as, while accounting is a reporting, uh, corporate finance is a decision-making oriented stuff, there, cash is supposed to be the king. And therefore, uh, as a decision maker, as a manager, uh, it is very critical to be able to analyze, to be able to find out, to be able to forecast the cash flows about the company, about the firm, about the whatever is the business unit that you're talking about. All right, so people, make no mistake. What you're going to do is might look easy, and that is a good news. Uh, after having done a lot of provisioning and gross reporting, net reporting, and you know accrual concepts, cash flows is much simpler. But that doesn't mean it's less important. It's actually more important. In the overall scheme of things, there is one typical point called as, some people might know, called as the indirect method of cash flow statement. I will handle it in my particular way. I'm sure you're going to look at it like a piece of cake. But that's only one out of 10 things that you must know about cash flow. So in, even if you are a little confused about that one thing, let it not color your judgment about or your understanding of the balance nine components. Okay, that's the point that I'm driving home. Um, let me let me show you a slide and and ask you if this is something that you've already done ever before. If you recall, in one of the foundation classes, we said to measure the liquidity of the business, the stakeholder or you know the the, the preparer of the financial statement, which is the accountant. I'm at step three right now, financial reporting. They prepare a statement different than the income statement, which talks about performance. A statement different than balance sheet, which talks about position. This is a statement called as cash flow, which is relatively the new kid on the block. Very recently, under the new Companies Act, this cash flow statement has been included as part of the books of accounts. Earlier books of accounts meant only the P&L and the balance sheet. But as a matter of uh, being subject to accounting standard, the companies had to follow it. Companies law did not really mandate it as a books of account. Now, under the new Companies Act 2013, that is the change and cash flow has been given equal importance. In fact, paramount importance. Uh, 
you know, similar to your income statement and the balance sheet. So people, uh, long story short, I'm going to keep it very, very simple because you already know a lot of this stuff. You know that the three activities uh, a business, uh, you know, can do is operating, investing and financing. By operating, you mean day to day. Investing, you mean long term business assets like machinery, furniture and things like those. Buying or selling. Remember, squaring off doesn't change the nature. And financing, of course, was the capital structure oriented where you were dealing with your debt providers, equity providers or preference provider, borrowing money, repaying money and, you know, servicing all that dividend interest and all that understanding is also going to be used here because your cash transactions during the year. Imagine there are about 100 cash transactions during the year. You need to you need to classify them as an accountant to be able to allow the stakeholder to make any judgment, any reasonable. So it's not only about presenting the information, it's about presenting the information in a meaningful fashion. So to make that information into a meaningful presentation, I'm going to divide all the transactions that a business has done over the years into three categories. The very famous names, CFO, cash flow from operation, CFI from investing and CFF is financing. I have a lot of examples that are going to come up uh, right here. I'm going to go back to my slide. CFO inflows, just imagine where is an inflow is going to come. It's an operating activity and it's a, a cash activity. Now people, since you're an MBA, I'm sure you're going to understand these Venn diagrams. My first circle is the cash transactions. My second circle is the operating transaction, all operational transactions. This intersection of one and two is essentially CFO. Make no mistake. In the life class, when I ask you to give a few examples, you will every time focus on only the O part. You're going to forget that the same thing has to be in cash as well. So, for example, what's going to come into this zone, which is something operating but not cash? Many. You have things like provisions, you have things like depreciations, you have things like credit sale. All of these things are operating day to day, but none of that is in cash. What are the things that are going to come in uh, this particular zone? Things that are in cash but not operating? That's where CFI and CF. F comes into picture where you have the investing, the long term transactions uh, that's investing for you, where you're talking about your long term business assets. And now you also know that your non business assets are also part of this investing activity. So, um, so, you know, that's what you got to keep into mind while you are looking at it more analytical perspective and less an accountant perspective now. So a few examples people here, you see the direct taxes in indirect taxes, any kind of taxes paid is operating, you know, payment to suppliers, wages, rent, everything's operating. Scrap sales and the proceeds that you derive out of it, remember, is secondary but still operating. So this is your secondary but operating and therefore that's going to come in your inflows, collection from customers, cash sales, income tax refund, anything like that, day to day operating in the cash then it's your financing activities remember equity debt preference raising money from them issuance of shares like an ipo or an fpo a receipt of loan from the financers taking loan issue of debentures any kind of an inflow outflows is repayment of to any of these three and payment of interest or dividend okay put it very very simply uh, then you have uh, activities under investing yeah here and that's a little confusing point, people. A little confusing point. Sometimes when I buy machinery, it gives me a sense that there is an inflow happening. Right, absolutely right. An inflow is happening. So A is equal to L plus C. Cash goes down and the inflow happens. But of machinery. I am right now when I'm talking about the inflow and outflow, I'm talking about the cash. The problem doesn't happen in case of financing or operating, that's simpler. But in case of investing activity, please make sure that you don't interchange. Whenever you need to have an inflow of cash, the asset must go out. So you have things like uh, sale of old plant and machinery or sale of your investments. 
don't interchange. When you buy a machine, when you buy a long-term non-operating or short-term non-operating investment, whenever you buy something, that's when the cash outflow happens. People, let's not make this mistake. This is very commonsensical point. I want to keep it that way. Achha, um, if let's say I sold an old uh, machinery and I made some gain, where would that go? Definitely that's investing item. But the question is, this is not income statement where gains and losses are going to come in. Make sure you understand this point. And I have an example for the life class to kind of bring it on. Uh, so let's say uh, something worth rupees 10 have been sold for 12. So machinery goes down, cash goes up. You made a gain under P&L, $2 non-operating. It is part of investing, clearly understood. A is equal to L plus C. My question to you people is that this two rupees of gain is anyways included in the sales proceed of 12. I am not going to show this two rupees anywhere in my cash flow statement that two rupees is for the income statement that's for my performance my cash flow is 12 here so people cash flow is how an old businessman sitting in a wholesale market would manage where has it come from where is it going simple really do not worry about on a day-to-day -day basis how much is a gain or a loss at the end of the period we will figure it out if we have more cash we would have made a good job if we have less cash than we started we would have made a bad job that's the psyche by which you should you know, make the cash flow statement. Record the cash. And I also remember telling you uh, to always catch the cash while you were doing A is equal to L plus C while you were a you know, kindergarten. You know, now you are absolutely a mature adult in terms of financial accounting and you have a lot of promise. But uh, I hope that you remember your you know, stepping stones and the foundation stone. So people, uh, interest and dividend that you would have received from your investment in cash also goes under CFI because the basic investment is non-operating. So income received also is non-operating and so on and so forth. So people, I want to come back to this opening slide here uh, and spend one minute on that to understand how what is the broad structure. And I want to take your example because every student who puts up in a hostel or puts up at a place other than the residence, you know, away from parents, makes a cash flow statement knowingly or unknowingly. So whenever you come you know, you start your journey in the first trimester or semester, you bring some cash from home. And then there is a call after a couple of weeks uh, from the parents. Do you need more cash? How much cash is left? So you're going to make some kind of a reconciliation about I started with this amount. X is what I paid to him or her. Y is go went there, Z here, there, etc. And now from, let's say, a 20,000 amount, I should have 4,000 uh, left. That's what you're doing with your memory. And then you're going to count the cash physically. That's exactly is the statement of making cash flows. That's exactly the process, people. No high five stuff. Now, from a figure of 20,000 that you were, you have reached a figure of 4,000, which means the net change in cash that you experienced is 16. And therefore, you would be very interested to find out where did this 16 go? And that all the reasons will be bifurcated into the three components. Okay, the operating component, investing component, and financing. So for example, uh, you, let's say, you know, had some Maggie and snacks on a daily basis. Out of these 10,000, 8,000 had gone there. Okay, two weeks, 8,000 is too much, huh? but sometimes, you know, people spend that kind of money. Um, that goes out of operating, okay? It's an outflow. Remember, negative sign denotes an outflow. Um, you also bought, let's say, a mouse for your laptop. And mouse, you think, is going to work for three years. Therefore, it becomes a long-term asset. Uh, you had bought mouse for, let's say, 5,000 rupees. Wireless mouse with Bluetooth and so many features, 5,000 rupees. Some IT equipment you can imagine. So it's a long-term business asset for a student. Okay, uh, And, uh, you know, this is some kind of an interest payment that you've done for the loan, uh, you know, that let's say your parents have taken for your education or anything. So let's say you have paid 3000 of your interest. So people, uh, you see that your 16,000 of an outflow has been reconciled in a way. Uh, I could have had another option. I could have another option wherein, uh, let me present that to you. The reconciliation of minus 16. Uh, if your parents would ask how much cash do you have, you would say 4,000. The net delta during the year has been 16,000 negative. And then you realize that during that year, 
in fact you have borrowed 10000 from your uh, friend so it's a loan that you had taken and any loan that you've taken would have given you money would have in an inflow and then you would realize that there was a huge amount of money that you had spent on the laptop and let's say uh, just to put the balancing figure here uh, the laptop is going to be negative plus 2 minus 18 let's say uh, you would have spent 18,000 in buying a laptop uh, so total minus 26 plus 10 minus 16 is the change that you experience so all I'm trying to say is, well there could be any combination multiple infinite combinations but you see what you're doing you are classifying your transactions under O I and F so that tomorrow if you have to look back and analyze um, kharcha zada ho hai ki kam, you'd be able to make some sense out of it okay so people let's not make any complication in something called as cash flows fairly straightforward statement um, just remember that if you happen to be an analyst tomorrow any kind of analyst people will expect you that you'd be able to find out the cash flow statement of your subject matter of analysis people will expect you that you would understand things like cfo cff and cfi people would expect you that you would absolutely not be afraid of something called as an indirect method which you know is going to be covered as part of a different video okay so cfo cff cfi is the you know is a basic building block net cash flow is the sum total of all and if you add the opening uh, it should give you the closing that's a very simple statement right people uh, i'm very excited to meet you in the live class with lots of finer things which are still left as far as the basic module is concerned um, thank you very much for uh, you know this audience looking forward to see you in the live class